From surprising rare events to accidental deaths, here are eight of the weirdest historical coincidences ever. Number eight, the My Way killings. People in the Philippines love karaoke. The country is full of karaoke bars and singing is a large part of their culture. For the most part, karaoke is a playful activity, but some people have taken it very seriously. On more than one occasion, people in the Philippines have been murdered while performing Frank Sinatra's 1969 song, My Way. The deaths have been called a coincidence by some because the song is a popular karaoke tune, but many Filipino karaoke bars have actually banned the song. In some places, the term videoki rage has been used to describe deaths. In one case, 29-year-old Romy Balagula was shot to death by a security guard after he wouldn't stop singing the song. The song has been known to spawn riots, and many people refuse to sing it because of the trouble it might cause. Number 7. Shilyabinsk Meteor and 2012 DA-14 On February 15, 2013, an asteroid entered the Earth's atmosphere over the southern Ural region of Russia and exploded. The event was witnessed by thousands of people and became the largest known airburst since the 1908 Tunguska event. The blast produced a light brighter than the sun and the shockwave was felt by people all over the area. The energy of the explosion was equivalent to 20 to 30 of the atomic bombs used at Hiroshima. The asteroid was not detected by the authorities before the airburst and the event surprised many people. It wounded 1,500 and damaged over 7,000 buildings. The meteor was caught on tape by multiple sources which show a giant fireball in the sky, followed by an enormous explosion of light. It was reported that the meteor made the ground hot and the city smelled like gunpowder after the explosion. The event was an extremely rare occurrence and the only time in history a meteor has been known to cause human injury. But then something even stranger happened. Approximately 16 hours after the Shilyabinsk meteor hit Russia, another asteroid named 2012 DA-14 came within 27,700 kilometers of the surface of Earth. The asteroid gained a new record for the closest passage to Earth for an object of its size. Despite the incredible rarity of the Shilyabinsk meteor and close approach of DA-14, it has been determined that the asteroids are in no way related because they had significantly different orbits. The coincidence is just crazy because the two events are so rare. Number 6, July 11th, 1991. On July 11th, 1991, a wave of unexplained UFO sightings occurred over Mexico City. The events were witnessed by thousands of people and investigated by the Mexican government. Coincidentally, the UFOs were seen during a total solar eclipse. During the eclipse, people in Mexico City reported a large metallic disc in the sky. The object was videotaped by multiple people and broadcast on the news. The event was one of the first widely reported UFO sightings in Mexico City, and since that time the area has become a hotbed of unexplained activity. The connections between the solar eclipse and the UFOs have caused some to speculate that the aircraft was predicted by the Dresden Codex of the Maya calendar. The calendar identifies the July 11th eclipse as the sixth sun of Quetzalcoatl and says it will bring about changes in cosmic awareness. In 2010, a story appeared on the internet that suggested the United States was keeping the events of July 11, 1991 hidden from the public. It also suggested that the U.S. government was fighting a secret war against aliens near the content of Antarctica. Number 5. Chris Benoit and Wikipedia In June of 2007, professional wrestler Chris Benoit murdered his family and committed suicide. Benoit was a popular member of World Wrestling Entertainment, and news of his death shocked people all over the world. Over a three-day period, Benoit strangled his wife, suffocated his seven-year-old son, and then used a weight machine to hang himself. In the wake of the tragedy, it was revealed that Benoit had previously been accused of abusing his wife and was prone to fits of rage. Some felt he might have experienced a case of roid rage, been a severe alcoholic, or had brain damage. However, in a strange coincidence, 14 hours before the police discovered the bodies of Benoit and his family, his English Wikipedia page reported on the death of his wife Nancy. It said, quote, Chris Benoit was replaced by Johnny Nitro for the ECW World Championship match at Vengeance, as Benoit was not there due to personal issues, stemming from the death of his wife Nancy. As it turns out, the man decided to mess with Benoit's Wikipedia page one fateful day and incidentally predicted the death of his wife the following day. The event has been called an unbelievable hindrance by the police, who seized the computer of the man who posted the information. Number 4. Eleanor Rigby The song Eleanor Rigby was released by the Beatles on August 5, 1966, which was a week before the band's last commercial tour. 
1966, McCartney gave an interview about how he came up with the lyrics for the song. He said that he originally came up with the idea of Father McCartney, but figured it was inappropriate to use his dad's name, so he looked up in the phone book and found the name Mackenzie. Ultimately, the name Father Mackenzie was used in the song's lyrics. McCartney came up with the name Eleanor from actress Eleanor Braun, and Rigby from a store in Bristol named Rigby and Evans Limited Wine and Spirit Shippers. In 1984, Paul was quoted saying that he just liked the name and he was looking for a name that sounded natural. In the 1980s, a grave was discovered in St. Peter's Parish Church in Wilton, Liverpool, with the name Eleanor Rigby on it. Even more coincidentally, a few yards from Eleanor's grave is another tombstone with the last name Mackenzie on it. The cemetery is located near the spot where Lennon and McCartney first met, and the two spent a lot of time in the cemetery sunbathing as teenagers. In response to the news that there was a gravestone with the name Eleanor Rigby, McCartney said that he might have been subconsciously influenced by the name on the gravestone. As a result, the coincidence is one of the most famous in rock history. Number 3. Death of Ahmad Shah Massoud and 9-11 Ahmad Shah Massoud was a military leader in Afghanistan who was assassinated on September 9, 2001 two days before 9-11. At the time of his death, Massoud was the head of the United Islamic Front and strongly opposed the Taliban. He was a central figure in the resistance against the Soviet Union in the 1980s and became a hero in Afghanistan after the war. On September 9, 2001, two men posing as journalists killed Ahmad Shah Massoud in a suicide bombing. The culprits placed a bomb in a camera and blew it up while meeting with the military leader. One of the assassins died in the explosion and the other was reportedly shot and killed while trying to flee the scene. Despite an attempt by the United Islamic Front to keep the news quiet, Massoud's death was almost immediately reported by the BBC and North American news outlets. Several months before 9-11, Ahmad Shah Massoud gave a speech to the European Parliament that warned against a major terrorist attack in the United States. It is thought that he was murdered by al-Qaeda to help protect Osama bin Laden and the Taliban in the wake of 9-11. Osama likely felt he could take control of the Northern Alliance with Massoud out of the picture. Al-Qaeda has never taken responsibility for the assassination. Number 2. Peshtigo and Great Chicago Fires On October 8, 1871, the Midwestern United States experienced an enormous firestorm that burned 6,100 square kilometers of land around Peshtigo, Wisconsin. The event is the deadliest fire in U.S. history and killed between 1,500 and 2,500 people. The 1871 firestorm was caused by strong winds and forest fires. After gaining enough energy, the blaze quickly developed into a massive wall of fire that reached a speed of 160 km per hour and produced tornado-style winds. The fire was so hot that sandy beaches were turned to glass and people were incinerated. The fire jumped over the waters of Green Bay and destroyed 12 separate communities in the area. It tossed rail cars and houses into the air and left thousands of people with nothing. Coincidentally, some 400 kilometers south of Peshtigo, Wisconsin, the city of Chicago experienced one of its largest fires in history, also on October 8, 1871. Even stranger is that the Great Michigan Fire also started on October 8 and burned a large number of cities in the area. When looking over the destruction, some have come to wonder what triggered all these fires that were independent of each other. The coincidence has caught the attention of a group of researchers who have proposed that the fires were all started when Comet Biela broke up over the Midwest. Meteorites aren't known to start or spread fires since they're cold to the touch when reaching the ground. However, it has been suggested that the methane in comets could potentially ignite if the object is large enough and hits a dry patch of land that has experienced forest fires. Others have suggested that an airburst over a forest fire-riddled area could cause a massive firestorm. Number 1. Violet Jessup Violet Jessup was an ocean liner stewardess that survived three separate disasters on Olympic-class ocean liners, including the sinking of the RMS Titanic. The three ships were the largest and most luxurious boats of the early 20th century, but coincidentally, they experienced horrible accidents early in their careers. Violet Jessup was an Irish emigrant who worked her first job as a stewardess with the Royal Mail Line on the Orinoco. On June 14, 1911, Jessup was on the RMS Olympic when the boat crashed with the cruiser HMS Hawk. At the time of the accident, the Olympic was the largest civilian liner in the world. It took heavy damage and flooding in the crash, but was able to make it back to Southampton. On April 10, 1912, Violet boarded the RMS Titanic on the ship's maiden voyage. Four days later, the boat hit an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic. During the sinking, Violet was asked to set an example for the people who did not speak English and were having a hard time following directions. She was able to board the 16th lifeboat and was given a baby to look after. 
After the outbreak of World War I, Jessup worked as a stewardess for the British Red Cross. On November 21, 1916, she was on board the HMHS Britannic when the ship hit a mine and sank in the Aegean Sea. The Britannic was the largest ship to be lost during World War I, and 30 people died in the tragedy. As the ship went under, Jessup was forced to jump off her lifeboat and was pulled under the water and hit her head on the ship's keel. But she was able to surface and be rescued. Before the Britannic was lost, Jessup made sure to grab her toothbrush because it was the one item she most missed in the aftermath of her Titanic experience. I bet none of her friends wanted to get on a boat with her after all that. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more Peachy Planet. I'm Amber and I'll see you next time.